Number 1. Faint Galaxy Pearl's NASA's James Webb Space Telescope continues to astound, this time with an incredible image that reveals previously undiscovered galaxies near the North Ecliptic Pole. The image is one of the few medium-depth, wide-field photographs of our universe, and it depicts thousands of galaxies across a dizzying range of distances, stretching to the distant regions of the universe while also containing stars from our own Milky Way. The new image from the Prime Extragalactic Areas for Rayonization and Lensing Science program, taken by the James Webb Space Telescope, also shows a number of interacting galaxies. The glittering sight was caught by Webb's near-infrared camera, which covers 2% of the region covered by the full moon. The image was created by combining eight different hues of near-infrared light, taken by NIRCAM, with three different colors of ultraviolet and visible light, collected by the Hubble Space Telescope. Because this particular region of sky is located near the North Ecliptic Pole, it may be observed at any time of year and is not obscured by the Sun while JWST orbits. Regular views allow JWST to see what is happening in the field, which opens up new possibilities for time domain astronomy, which studies how celestial objects change over time. Number 2. Lonely Dwarf Galaxy the most powerful space telescope currently in operation has zoomed in on a lonely dwarf galaxy in our galaxy's neighborhood, capturing images of it in breathtaking detail. The dwarf galaxy, named Wolf Lundmark Malot, after three astronomers involved in its discovery, is close enough to Earth that the James Webb Space Telescope can distinguish individual stars while studying large numbers of stars at the same time. The dwarf galaxy in Cetus is one of the most distant members of the local galactic group that includes our galaxy. Because of its isolation and lack of interactions with other galaxies, including the Milky Way, WLM is important in studying how stars grow in smaller galaxies. Another reason WLM is an appealing target, according to McQuinn, is that its gas is remarkably comparable to that of galaxies in the early universe, with no atoms heavier than hydrogen and helium. However, Unlike the gas in those early galaxies, the gas in WLM has lost its share of these elements due to a phenomena known as galactic winds. These winds are caused by supernovas, or exploding stars. Because WLM is so small, these winds can push material out of the dwarf galaxy. McQuinn described seeing an assortment of individual stars at various stages of evolution, with a variety of colors, sizes, temperatures, and ages in the JWST image of WLM. The image also depicts nebulas, which are clouds of molecular gas and dust that contain the raw material for star formation within WLM. JWST can detect exciting phenomena in background galaxies, such as huge tidal tails, which are structures consisting of stars, dust, and gas generated by gravitational interactions between galaxies. Number 3. Water Ice at Ringed Asteroid Even in space, the most meticulous plans require a dash of luck. The James Webb Space Telescope observed Chariklo, a small ringed asteroid, eclipse a star in October 2022. This incident, known as an occultation, was a first for Webb. At the end of the month, Webb returned to Chariklo and scored another victory. Astronomers examining the telescope's data discovered unmistakable traces of water ice, which had previously only been hinted at. These findings will help astronomers better grasp the nature and behavior of small bodies in our solar system's furthest reaches. Despite being the largest of its kind, Chariklo is still too small and too far away for even the most powerful web to image directly. Instead, astronomers decided to investigate it using occultation, an indirect but powerful approach for studying tiny things like Chariklo. However, the researchers had no idea when or if a star will come into Webb's field of view, which is required for an occultation to occur. This included Chariklo in Webb's Target of Opportunity program, which allowed astronomers to momentarily break the telescope's schedule to observe the event if the asteroid were to pass in front of a star. The researchers determined that Webb had a 50% probability of spotting a star bright enough with an interesting object, like Chariklo crossing in front of it. After its launch in 2021, the team continued to predict and revise its list of likely occultations as Webb went through routine course corrections to keep it stable in its parking location in orbit. Late last year, astronomers discovered, by remarkable good luck, that Chariklo was on pace to occult a star that also happened to be in Webb's line of sight. 
Number three, magnificent pillars of creation sparkle. The iconic pillars of creation were made famous by the Hubble Space Telescope, but the new James Webb Space Telescope is now genuinely bringing them to life, revealing hundreds of newly born stars twinkling inside the famed dust clouds. The spectacular pillars of creation, located 7,000 light years away in the constellation Serpens, are column-shaped clouds of interstellar dust and gas that are part of the Eagle Nebula. The first photograph of them, acquired in 1995 by the Hubble Space Telescope's predecessor, astonished astronomers with their terrifying beauty. Webb's near-infrared camera captured the pillars in considerably better detail, with fine cloud formations emerging with clarity and hundreds of previously invisible stars sparkling throughout the scene. According to NASA, many of these stars were created only a few hundred thousand years ago. Webb can peek through the clouds and see protostars forming from the merging dust because of its capacity to detect infrared light, which is essentially heat. Hubble, with its far weaker infrared detectors, also attempted to peer inside the nebula, but Webb's results significantly outperformed those efforts. Webb's pillars are softer, more finely structured, with vivid red lava flows surrounding the margins of some of the clouds, but Hubble's are black and threatening, rising against a foggy backdrop of a very empty universe. These lava flows are actually material ejected by developing stars, according to the European Space Agency, which collaborates with NASA on the James Webb Space Telescope project. Number three, early days of star formation. A dazzling cosmic hourglass filled with bright colors and sheltering a nascent star, or protostar, at its heart, has been discovered by the world's newest space telescope. A dense, dark cloud of gas and dust known as L, 1527 has masked the blazing formation within the Taurus star forming zone and the protostar within it from observatories. The formation is only visible in infrared light, making it an ideal target for the James Webb Space Telescope's near-infrared camera. Astronomers expect that studying the cosmic hourglass may shed light on the processes taking place surrounding the protostar, which is obscured from view at the formation's neck. L1527's protostar and the source of these tumultuous conditions is only 100,000 years old, a newborn in cosmic terms. Because of its young age and infrared brightness, the L1527 star is classified as a class zero protostar, the most primitive stage of star creation. Class zero protostars, such as this one, are still cocooned within the clouds of gas and dust from which they form and are a long way from becoming complete stars. The protostar shape is currently primarily spherical, but still unstable, and it would resemble a tiny, hot, and puffy cluster of gas with a mass of 40% to 20% that of the Sun. While the protostar is obscured, the image shows a protoplanetary disk of gas and dust surrounding the star, which appears as a dark line across the hourglass's neck. This arrangement emerges when material is attracted to the hourglass's core, allowing the protostar to feed off the disk, which is roughly the size of the solar system. As the young star acquires mass to expand in size, the material compresses the star, elevating the temperature and pressure in the core sufficiently to initiate nuclear fusion. Fusion converts hydrogen in the star's core to helium, providing energy and represents a significant milestone in the star's evolution. Number six. Scientists were taken aback when the James Webb Space Telescope discovered its first supernova, the explosion of a dying star. According to academics, the discovery could pave the way for an altogether new area of inquiry. The James Webb Space Telescope's NIRCAM camera discovered an unexpected bright object in a galaxy called SDSS J141930, 11 plus 52 51593 about three to four billion light years from Earth, just a few days after it began science operations. The brilliant object diminished during a five-day period, implying that it was a supernova that was caught by chance shortly after the star burst. The discovery is unusual because the James Webb Space Telescope was not designed to look for supernovas, which is typically done by large-scale survey telescopes that scan enormous areas of the sky at short intervals. Webb, on the other hand, examines a very small portion of the universe in tremendous detail. For example, in mid-July, US President Joe Biden released a deep field shot 
that covered an area roughly the size of a grain of sand. Because the detection occurred within the first week of Webb's science activities, astronomers believe that the depth of Webb's photos may have compensated for the tiny area. Each deep field image contains hundreds of galaxies, which means there are hundreds of chances to observe a supernova. According to Inverse, the early identification means that the telescope may be able to spot supernovas on a regular basis. That would be thrilling, especially since Webb is expected to see the formation of the universe's first galaxies in the first hundreds of millions of years following the Big Bang. When that old perspective is combined with the unexpected supernova observation, Webb may be able to capture the explosion of one of the first generation stars that illuminated the cosmos after the dark early years. Astronomers believe that these stars had a considerably simpler chemical makeup than stars produced later in time. Number seven, oldest black hole in the universe. The James Webb Space Telescope discovered the universe's first known black hole, and astronomers believe many earlier ones could have crowded the primordial cosmos. The supermassive black hole, with a mass 10 million times that of the Sun, was discovered at the center of a young galaxy 570 million years after the first began by the James Webb Space Telescope, whose powerful cameras allow it to see back in time to the earliest phases of the cosmos. The cosmic monster could be one of numerous black holes that gorged themselves to ever larger sizes during the cosmic dawn which began approximately 100 million years after the Big Bang and lasted a billion years. Black holes are formed by the collapse of massive stars and grow indefinitely by feasting on gas, dust, stars, and other black holes. Friction leads the material spiraling towards the gluttonous space-time ruptures to heat up, and they generate light that can be observed by telescopes, transforming them into so-called active galactic nuclei, AGN. The most extreme AGN are quasars, which are billions of times more massive than the Sun and release their gaseous cocoons with light blasts trillions of times brighter than the brightest stars. Because light travels at a constant speed through space, the deeper scientists search, the more distant light they intercept and the further back in time they view. The astronomers searched the sky with two infrared cameras, the JWST's mid-infrared instrument and near-infrared camera then used the camera's built-in spectrographs to break down the light into its component frequencies to find the black hole. 